Hello, this is Matt from TracyMatt.co.uk and for Unboxings.com. Here I have the Motorola Milestone XT720. I'm going to do a quick unboxing video for you, take a look at the handset uh, before we actually do the full review. Now the Motorola Milestone, the original version, certainly was a very successful device and I think pretty much put Motorola back on the map in terms of uh, mobile handsets. And I, obviously they are hoping to repeat that success with the XT720. So, uh, handset is immediately on top. We're going to have a look at that in a bit more detail in just a few moments. Just want to check out what else we have uh, actually in the box itself. And that all opens up like so. Just that out of the way. Underneath we have, well, let's take all these accessories out. It's probably going to be easier. Take those all out. Uh, box design is a little unusual. Um, and the doesn't actually come apart, so uh, you're not going to lose it, I guess. So what we have in the box, plus we have a charger, which we'll just take a quick look at. I think it's just, yeah, it's a standard USB style charger, so three pin UK plug uh, with a USB connector on the top. Which leads us then to the USB, so standard USB to uh, micro USB sync charge cable. So using that for charging up the handset with that adapter and also for um, syncing with your PC. Now, another cable. This one's gonna be is quite unusual um, because of a specific thing that the XT720 can do. So it has a micro HDMI connector on one end which kind of looks a bit like um, micro USB, but it's, uh, it's not, it's HDMI. And a full size HDMI connector on the other end, uh, a fair, fair length of cable there. Uh, one of the key features of the XT720 is that you can output the video from the handset onto your TV using the HDMI connector, and it will actually output uh, HD uh, footage, so it's pretty impressive. We'll actually look at that properly when we come to do the review. We won't be doing that right now. Um, so this is the battery, uh, 3.7 volts. I can't see a capacity listed. There we go, 1390 milliamp hour battery. We'll need that in a moment. Which then gives us the battery compartment or battery door, if you like, which is metal. That goes on the back, we'll need that in a moment too. And the last thing, really, accessory-wise, is a wired headset. So, like others, it comes with uh, foam covers and a clip to clip it onto clothing. And then the headset itself has a four-pole, three and a half-mil jack on one end. Length of cable taking it up to a small inline light in my microphone, uh, which does have a push button. I think it's difficult to tell. Um, but that's your inline microphone, and then the actual headphones themselves, which uh, I kind of guess they kind of look okay, a bit lightweight, um, just sort of the in-ear style. Uh, nothing terribly special, uh, but the best uh, beauty is that you can obviously use your own headphones because it's a three and a half mil headphone socket. And then we have the manual, which is uh, fairly lightweight, really, not a lot to it. Um, covers the basics, getting started. Uh, the HDMI output and that kind of stuff, and uh, how to insert your SIM card, those sorts of bits and pieces that you're always going to want to know immediately. So uh, let's take a quick tour around the handset, and then we'll put the battery in. So on the front we have a 3.7 inch display. 3.7 inch, I think, personally, is um, is about the, the largest I want to have from a phone, to, to be perfectly honest. Uh, just like the original uh, Milestone, it's 480 by 854 pixels, so slightly um, taller, if you like, than the average uh, 488 by 800. So uh, 50 more, 54 more pixels uh, in the uh, sort of long direction, if you like. Fairly large loudspeaker and a couple of sensors next to that, which are uh, well, I guess they're kind of obvious, um, unusually really. Um, typically, you wouldn't see these sensors. So one of them is ambient light sensor, and the other one's proximity sensor, that kind of thing. Below that, we have a series of uh, touch-sensitive buttons. I'll just take off the screen protector. So these are touch-sensitive input buttons. Um, so you've got your home, back, search, and uh, menu buttons along the bottom. We also have here, which I'll show you again in a moment, but uh, some indicator LEDs. Uh, so this will indicate the 
uh, camera mode when you're actually using the camera and uh, so it actually just lights up behind. The little hole here is the microphone. Look down the left hand side, you have a cover over the micro USB connector and just on the top there we have an eyelet so that we can connect up a phone charm or a lanyard. Uh, really nothing to see on the bottom but on the right hand side have a few more controls. We have a camera button and uh, what looks to be like a play, I think that's the play playback button. So you actually play back uh, your videos or look back at your photos that you recorded. Uh, up and down volume control rocker, pretty typical, although uh, that's generally on handsets on the left hand side, not on the right, but uh, it is here on the right. Power button's on top and that's also the sort of sleep button. 3.5mm headphone connector right on top as well, obviously for using uh, headphones or the wired headset that comes with it. And then another cover over the micro HDMI connector, that's obviously where we plug in that HDMI cable should we want to uh, output to a TV. Uh, in here we have already in place a micro SD HD memory card. And this is an 8 gig micro SD HD memory card. Uh, I should point out that this is a full retail version of uh, the Milestone XT720. Uh, this one comes from our friends over at Clove Technology and that micro SD HD memory card is supplied as part of the package. Um, you don't have to buy one extra. Our SIM card goes here, obviously it just slides underneath, and then we need to install the battery, which pops in uh, actually that way around, like so, and then that cover goes on and just slides into place. That just uh, is fairly neat on the back there. We have an 8 megapixel autofocus camera, which has uh, both an LED and uh, a xenon flash. Uh, the LED is used for actually sort of focusing and helping to focus and obviously the flash itself uh, well, is a flash but it's a xenon flash which is pretty decent and uh, 8 megapixel also pretty good and it can record also 720p video but only 20 frames a second so there is a little of a compromise there um, not too much but there is a bit of a compromise it's not full 30 frames so we turn it around to the back to the front and uh, we'll just power up and while we wait for that to actually power up, let me run down the rest of the spec. Uh, operating system on here is Android 2.1 Eclair. Uh, processor 550 MHz. Um, that's not really massive, considering that there are uh, quite a few handsets out there now that are sort of in the 1 GHz range, um, 700 and you know, plus. Um, so 550 doesn't sound like a lot. I guess it's not all down to the actual number of MHz, and they may have a particularly efficient um, processor in there, but. Um, in terms of a benchmark that just doesn't seem very high. It's got uh, 512 meg of ROM, 256 meg of RAM and as I say 480 by 854 touchscreen display is multi-touch, will support multi-touch which is pretty decent and these are touch sensitive buttons at the bottom not physical buttons. Uh, operating frequency well GSM 900, 1800, 1900 and HSDPA 2100 so only single band for HSDPA 3G but tri-band for uh, GSM um, that might be a slight drawback for anybody that wants to use a handset like this you know, for roaming in multiple countries uh, HSDPA supports up to 3.6 megabits per second has built-in Wi-Fi supporting 802.11b and G no wireless N unfortunately uh, Bluetooth 2.1 with A2DP support and uh, yeah, on the side uh, that is a USB 2.0 compliant uh, USB connector. Has built in GPS. The expansion slot on the back underneath the back cover does support up to 32 gig micro SDHC memory cards. And uh, built in FM radio with RDS support. And uh, finally, as I say, the camera itself, 8 megapixels, supporting 720p recording, but only at 20 frames a second, unfortunately. Uh, size 116 millimeters from top to bottom. Uh, just over 60 millimeters wide at the widest point because obviously we have this uh, bit that sort of sticks out uh, at the side which uh, is, I guess, guess is going to be a bit of a love-hate really this this styling at the side um, and we're just under 11 millimeters thick so quite thin quite slim 140 grams not particularly heavy and it does feel reasonably lightweight in your hand yeah, I guess because of its size um, versus its uh, versus its weight. Personally, I think it's a little. Uh, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the styling. Um, I don't particularly like the jutty out bit at the bottom, 
and uh, in your hand it just feels like the back cover isn't quite right. Um, you've got this sort of edge around it that you can't, I don't you can really make it out in the video, but there's sort of this lip all the way around the outside. Obviously, especially here, it's even more significant, but there's kind of a lip all the way around the outside. And to me, it almost feels like the back cover isn't on properly, or that there should be another cover over the back, but uh, it's just a personal thing. So let's take a quick look at the OS then, and uh, we'll turn that back on. Uh, it's telling me I have no SIM card, I don't particularly care. So the milestone it uh, won't actually work without a SIM card installed apparently. So in case of removing the back cover, and uh, we'll just pop a SIM card in. Can we get the SIM card in without taking the battery out? Looks like we can. Might be a bit more difficult to get the SIM card out with the battery in place, but we'll do that nonetheless and see if it now complains. Yeah, no SIM card. Probably best we pop the battery out. Pop it back in again. Back cover on, which is, I guess it's kind of a little fiddly there, there we go, and we'll just repower up. Like that's power on. Already the screen there, as you can see, is full of fingerprints and uh, palm prints where I've been handling the device, so let's just rub that on our t-shirt to clean it up. There we go, that's a bit better. I'm going to just wait for that to power on. Okay, uh, touch the Android bin as we will. Uh, we'll skip how to learn how to use the uh, Android. I'm going to skip the setting up all the accounts just now and uh, quickly cycle through the original setup. There we go. So that gets us to here. We can complete the setup uh, later on if we want to. So this is your typical home screen arrangement, so you have your Google search, it does have a voice search there so we can actually tap the microphone and speak our search. Moto navs included, contacts, browser, maps, camera gallery, email and YouTube all on the uh, sort of main home screen. And we can scroll either side, so we have the radio app or widget there, we have a blank page and then coming back the other way, we have an analogue style clock and another blank page. Uh, touch screen seems quite sensitive and every time I'm touching the screen there is just the tiniest amount of haptic feedback. Uh, it's just enough without being uh, more of too much and just enough to let me know that I have touched the screen so it's pretty cool. And uh, say so screens it's capacitive so it's going to be fairly sensitive anyway but it does seem really quite good. In terms of the other things that are installed we can bring up all of the installed applications so uh, in terms of things that are out of the ordinary well corporate calendars included um, which uh, tends to get removed from other uh, versions of Android. It's obviously part of 2.1 but it typically gets removed by some manufacturers so you have to use like RoadSync or something like that for um, exchange and corporate email. Uh, obviously you've got the FM radio, Android markets in there, Moto Nav is something that obviously you're only going to get with this Motorola. Uh, quick office and settings we have in there. There's a video editor and a voice search, uh, a YouTube client a few other bits and pieces. I have the camcorder and camera. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to quickly go in here, go into settings, and I'm going to go ahead and oh, it's got a thing here for HDMI. Let's have a quick look at that. So the HDMI format, and um, we can determine what mode it's outputting in. So that's pretty cool. And we we'll leave it on automatic for now. Come back. Uh, so I'm going to go into wireless and networks. I'm going to turn Wi-Fi on. And then I'm going to add a Wi-Fi network and put in my passkey. And when I'm just just before I do that, you can see here the QWERTY keyboard, which is uh, a very standard QWERTY for uh, Android devices. Nothing terribly out of the ordinary. Whether or not we can work this way around, yes, we can. And then you can see a much larger QWERTY keyboard comes up. 
Uh, and because we have a little bit more room on this display versus some of the others, that is a pretty large QWERTY keyboard in the landscape mode. So the, obviously the uh, G sensor is working quite well. So let me put in my pass key. And that is just obtaining an address and is connected pretty quick to actually get that working. And we'll come back out of here. We'll have a look at bits and pieces in here later. So I'll take a quick look at the web browser. So it's initially going to Google. Obviously it's quite fast. I'm using broadband connection uh, over Wi-Fi. We've got a signal strength meter at the top. Um, I'm pretty close to where my um, base station is, my wireless access point. Um, and I'm only getting kind of two bars there. So whether that's indicative of um, you know the signal quality that we're expecting to receive or, or if it's just, uh, I don't know, the distance I am or whatever. But we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit more detail when it comes to do the full review. Backlight's obviously turned off. Definitely want to change the backlight timeout to unlock. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a... We're going to go to... Here. I'm going to go to our site. Again, every time I touch the screen, there is just the smallest amount of haptic feedback that will vibrate inside, and it's pretty good. Um, in actual fact, it just feels like there's just enough. There we go. It actually come up as one of the suggestions anyway. So let's see our load time. Pretty quick. Our rendering time seems pretty fast. The display is really clear, and the colours are pretty fantastic, to be honest with you. Certainly on par with that of the uh, the desire, I would say, in terms of the actual quality. The greens and the oranges there are popping quite well. So it's loaded, and that backlight timeout definitely has to be changed. Um, that's loaded quite, quite quickly, rendered quite quickly, and uh, quite faithfully, really. Uh, if we'd actually turn on the handset, there we go. So it's... Uh, allows us to do two finger zooming in multi-touch obviously we can scroll around, the scrolling is quite smooth um, don't seem to be noticing any particular lag and obviously the 550 MHz processor isn't a, a problem for, uh, for this uh, web browsing experience in any way so that's pretty good, we'll come back out of there okay, we'll just get home have a quick look at Google Maps and see if that's going to pick up GPS signal Indoors. Looks like it has, accurate to 70 meters. Certainly seems good enough. Um, two fingers? Yep, so we have two fingers zooming in Google Maps. I quite like that. I think that's typically the best, the most, uh, the place where I would use it most, in fact. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the camera. And let's put something in the way. Not terribly exciting, but the box. In actual fact, there is a little screen protector or lens protector over there, so let's just remove that. And you can see the indicator LED on the side. Let's move that in shot a bit more. So the indicator LED here coming up behind the little camera icon, so it's telling me that I'm taking a still photo. And there we go. And that looks pretty clear actually. And we'll come back to that in a second, or we'll just go to view. And in view mode, uh, that picture is really quite good. Uh, supporting multi touch here. In the preview, obviously, I'm going to take the picture of the box anyway, so it's not terribly exciting. I'll take uh, a lot more photos when it comes to the review. But the indicator LED is now behind the playback. If we press that again, we go back into video mode, and you can see the little video icon. And if we press the button there again, we can switch back to playback and back to camera. So it cycles through, which is pretty good. Hit home. Uh, I won't look at email just now because it requires a little bit of setup. I'll just take a look at see if there's anything else in here that we want to take a uh, quick look at. Uh, take a look at the FM radio. Do we need the headphones plugged in? Looks like, uh, well, it doesn't enforce us using the headphones. is taking a while to turn the radio on apparently. There we go. 
we can automatically scan, we won't bother, we're probably not going to pick anything up using uh, without using headphones, so we'll just exit that. We'll take a quick look at the YouTube app, see how quickly that works, so we'll search for Leo D, which is my YouTube channel name, Leo D, and we'll search for Leo D Unboxing. So you have plenty of unboxing videos to take a look at over on YouTube, so let's just uh, pick one, Black Storm, there we go. For fun. Any video. Let's come up HQ in the corner. And a little bit of a latency here in terms of streaming the video. But that could be down to my internet connection, not the fastest here living in the uh, countryside as we do. And the backlight's timed out. There we go, and we eventually got there. This is a fairly old video, in fact, that I'm just trying to play here, but you kind of get the idea. There we go. Okay, well, so it should take a little while to actually start playing. But that could be indicative of a problem with my internet connection rather than the handset. And let's just take a look at Moto now, see if it's something that we can quickly look at or if we've got to come back to it. It's saying installing. the agreement. The little icon at the top has come up saying that uh, the GPS is on, so yeah. Go through the setup. I'm just accepting all the defaults. Activate later. So it appears that it's some sort of possibly a trial license. And that's what got well. This actually that has picked up my location and uh, put it straight into the map so we'll play around with that an awful lot more when it comes to doing the review don't use sat and have a great deal myself but we definitely will check it out uh, in terms of anything else in here well, we've got the messaging app I don't want to set my Google account let's go back into messaging it's obviously where we do our text messaging compose a new message and it brings up the quality keyboard like I rotate that brings up the landscape quality. The rotate isn't too bad. There's a little bit of a lag there, but nothing really significant. It's looked pretty decent. And uh, there's a video editor, but we'll take a look at that later. And there is also the Motorola portal. And there's music app and media gallery. And a few other bits and pieces there. We'll take a look at the rest when it comes to a full review. Um, just take a look at it in terms of any other widgets. Uh, there are a few, so we've got the clock, we've got some clocks, we've got some calendars, the radio itself, Google Latitude and Music Player, and YouTube Power Control and Search. That appears to be all Power Control, something I'd probably want to use. So you can turn off, uh, turn on and off Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, GPS, and uh, uh, sync and uh, backlight controls. So you can cycle through different backlight brightnesses. All pretty useful to actually have as a widget. So that, this is the Motorola Milestone XT720. We'll have a full review for you over the next couple of weeks. As I say, this particular handset was uh, provided for us for review from our friends over at Clove Technology. They have the XT720 in stock right now. I think they're one of the first people to actually have stock here in the UK. So go over to clove.co.uk if you want to pick one of these up. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash tracyandmatt for all of our updates. I'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews on tracyandmatt.co.uk. But for now, thanks for watching.